Hello and welcome to episode 17 of the Low Back Pain Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Grant Elliott with Rehab Fix Online Low Back Program. And today's topic is failed low back surgery syndrome. If you tuned in to our last podcast, we discussed everything about inflammation, ways that you can reduce inflammation, not only to improve your overall health, but to potentially improve your low back recovery as well as a boost to your low back recovery or something that might uh, cover the final layers that might be missing of your low back recovery. And also how certain types of inflammation are good or are bad and how you can influence that through lifestyle and dietary modifications. But today we are going to be discussing something that is unfortunately a big problem, which is failed low back surgery syndrome. And unfortunately is many of you out there. Failed low back surgery syndrome is the connotation is there. It's in the name, an individual who has received a surgery and the surgery has failed. It either has not met their expectations in regards to recovery or it created more pain after that surgery. And unfortunately, the rates of this are quite high. So what they found is that around 10 to 40, 40, 10 to 40 percent of lumbar surgeries fit in this category. So on the low end, low, low, low end, 10%, right? One of every 10 surgeries will fail. On the high end, 40%, close to a flip of a coin that you have for your surgery failing or not. We can call it somewhere in the middle around 20 to 30%, okay, to be fair. So two of every three surgeries are gonna fail and you will either still have pain after it or be in more pain. That's not fantastic odds. And what will make these odds better or worse, I am about to discuss with you. The problem here is not surgery itself. You know, a lot of people think, oh, Grant, you know, he, you know, he helps people through rehab and helping them fix their low back. And he's anti-drugs, anti-injections, anti-surgery. I am not any of those things. I'm not anti-injection drugs or surgery. What I am is I am pro-responsible drugs, injections, surgery. The problem is very, very few scenarios exist where drugs, injections, or surgery are offered or prescribed responsibly. That's the problem. There's a use for everything. There's a scenario where anything could be useful. But if, and I have so many clients who, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting almost upset here. I have so many clients, so many, where they were in the gym, they were deadlifting, they felt a pop in their lower back, had some symptoms in the leg, went to the doctor three, three days, three days later, and they were immediately told, yep, sounds like a herniated disc, let's go ahead and take an MRI, yep, there's a, there's a disc right there, so let's go ahead and sign you up for surgery. That is insane. That is absolutely insane. Not only are you skipping the drugs and injections, which most likely weren't uh, necessary yet, but you're skipping all of those and you're going straight to the thing that cannot be undone, that cannot be reversed. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. And I hear this all the time. So to reemphasize that I am pro responsible use of drugs, injections, or surgery based on clinical guidelines. The issue here with failed low back surgery syndrome is not that all surgeries just fail terribly. Although that's sort of seems like the outcome here. The problem is that people are being pushed to surgery and are being mismanaged in an incorrect fashion. That's the problem. People who should not be sent for surgery are being sent for surgery. That is the problem. So let's say you have two different kinds of patients here. Okay. And I have recommended certain individuals to get surgery before, but let's take two different scenarios here. Okay. One person I've worked through my program with them. Okay, so we have gone through extensive evaluation, extensive rehab work, conservative therapy. We've tried many different movements for the discs, for their nerve, for all these different things. We worked on hips, core, um, so many different things, and they're still dealing with some low back issues. They have a good diet. 
their inflammation is under control. They have a good diet, good blood work, right? Their oil is in check. They are overall healthy in regards to not only the blood work, of course, but they're at a good body weight. They're not obese. They don't have any chronic diseases. They're not diabetic. Um, they don't have heart disease. They don't have all these other things. They're a healthy individual that has all of their health in check, that it has exhausted a thorough and expert level rehab program for their low back. And they're still dealing with issues that are either one, fitting the clinical criteria for surgery or two are simply not going away and are intrusive enough on this individual's lifestyle to where they're ready to try an invasive procedure. That is a good candidate for surgery. A bad candidate for surgery is the exact opposite. Someone who has been dealing with low back issues but hasn't put in any effort towards conservative therapy or has not received good rehab, they've received cookie cutter, poor rehab and oh, okay. Yeah. Physical therapy failed. That's not fair. There's all different kinds of physical therapy and rehab and interventions. And if you receive bad interventions, you're going to have bad outcomes. If you receive good interventions, good care, good coaching, you're going to have good outcomes most of the time if you follow the instruction, of course, (laughs) but for this individual, they're overweight. They're diabetic. Their blood work is poor. They haven't pursued conservative therapy or, or have received poor conservative therapy and they've only had these issues for a short period of time. They don't fit clinical criteria for surgery, but they say, oh, yeah, my low back really hurts. So nothing's working. Okay, let's go ahead and push you to surgery. That's someone who's going to have a very high chance of failure versus the other individual I discussed who's overall healthy, who cares about their body and has gone through proper rehab. The chances of those two individuals having the same outcomes are very, very, very slim. The individual who's healthy is probably going to have fantastic outcomes. They're probably going to be an ideal candidate for surgery. The other individual who's overweight, poor health, um, is not pursuing conservative care, they're probably going to have poor outcomes because if you're going into a surgery unhealthy with poor movement, you're coming out of the surgery unhealthy with poor movement. Your chances are pretty low that you're going to be in a different place for very long. Okay. That's probably going to be a chronic pain type individual because their situation is going to revert right back to where it was. Now, one other very interesting fact here is from 1998 to 2008, lumbar fusions increased by 170%. In regards to specific failure rates of different surgeries, they found... that lumbar fusion failure rate is between 30 to 46% and microdiscectomy surgery failure is between 19 to 25%. So generally speaking, fusions have a higher chance of failure than microdiscectomy. As many of you probably know, a fusion is exactly what it sounds like. They're fusing two vertebrae together to try to stabilize that disc segment and reduce movement through there. A microdiscectomy is they go in and they clean out the debris or the fragment of that disc herniation. So the final piece of this puzzle is even if the individual is healthy, has exhausted proper rehab for these issues, um, like let's say someone worked through my program and worked with me and we went through everything, What makes a good clinical candidate for surgery? There's a few red flags that would indicate that a surgery is actually necessary. Okay. I'll go through some of that criteria now. Someone might be experiencing numbness or lack of sensation in their saddle region. Saddle region, meaning if you were to sit on a bike, the region of your body where this seat would be touching. So it's essentially your groin region would be numb or lack of sensation. Your bowel or bladder function is changing, whether that is increased frequency or the inability to go, so reduced frequency and the inability to go, or significant motor deficits, meaning we've all heard the term drop foot, that is severe muscle loss. If you are slowly developing drop foot and it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and you're losing function of your foot, function of your leg, and it's continuing to progress, this is a criteria indicating, yeah, we want to be thinking about surgery. But if someone is not experiencing those signs and symptoms and they might have other areas of their life to work on, whether that's diet, 
weight, chronic disease, proper rehab program, other additional rehab options, they would not fit a good clinical criteria for surgery. Um, Those types of red flags that I discussed are strong indications. Of course, patient preference comes into play. If the individual doesn't want to put in any effort, if they don't want to, uh, you know, take the time to try to find an alternative, then it's within their right to sign up for surgery immediately. And hey, if, if it's helpful, great. I mean, it's a huge risk, but if it ends up being helpful, then good for them. You know, I'm happy that it ended up working out and they're not one of these very bad scenarios. Although most individuals I meet who had low back surgery and are still looking for help, typically the results fade around one to two years later because the lifestyle factors weren't changed. They did not change what got themselves into that circumstance in the first place. But that's neither here nor there. If the patient preference is such that they are aware of the risks, are aware that they have not pursued these other avenues that would make it a responsible decision, but they just want to do it anyway, then that's totally up to them. That is totally fair. So patient preference does come to play, but generally speaking, if the individual has other areas that they can work on and does not possess these red flag criteria, they are not an ideal candidate for surgery and might be wise to continue to put it off and try alternative options. So this is the issue with failed low back surgery syndrome. As we discussed, most individuals are being pushed towards surgery prematurely and are not ideal candidates. But generally speaking, surgery is not a good solution for low back issues. The rates of surgeries have vastly increased, even though the failure rates are still not good. Obviously, something needs to change and we need a different approach because the approach for low back issues since the dawn of time has not been working the biomedical model is not working for low back issues. And that is why I'm here preaching to you today and why you're listening because you care about changing this model. You care about getting relief. You care about learning more about low back issues because if you can learn how to fix these issues yourself through natural lifestyle modifications, uh, learning how to fix these issues yourself through different habits, movements, and all of these things, improving your mobility, improving your strength in the right areas, then you're going to maintain proper long-term results. It's as simple as that. If you don't learn how to change these things in your life, the chances of any sort of result from any procedure being sustainable are slim to none. So we got to continue to encourage people to seek alternative options, to learn about their body, to seek professional guidance, to improve their mobility, their strength, their habits, their understanding, to become equipped and empowered with the tools necessary for them to learn how to fix themselves so they don't have to rely on doctors, they don't have to rely on the system, and they don't still feel like they're in this hamster wheel spinning around and around and around, trapped, trying all these different things, but getting nowhere. Because I know how frustrating that is, and I know ultimately you're looking for results, and the current model, it's not working. So if you're struggling to find the right help, please let me know. I'd be honored to help you. I'll have a link in the show notes where you can submit an application so that you and I can meet and you and I can work through these problems together and get you a proper solution. And if you know anyone who's dealing with low back issues, please share this podcast with them. Please rate and review the podcast. It helps increase the exposure of the podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe so we can improve the exposure of this podcast to reach more people and to help more people. And thank you very much for listening and giving me the opportunity to speak with you today and to help in any way possible. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.